one of my diseases is I'm a I'm a hoarder f- for my whole life. And I think I got it from my dad. That's a fucking that's a block, Al. Oh yeah. We could have yeah, used side this. block. Side block. That's a that would have been on a main that would have been on the main Okay. Feed. Let's start over. Hoarder. All right. Hey, <laughs> welcome to blocks, ladies and gentlemen. Um do so I so 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 part of that is like you know there there's a number of reasons there's a number of ways you can confront your sense of mortality you can like write like you're running out of time like Lynn would say uh, which you know I kind of feel like I've done that I'm you know I'm good there uh, or you could just kind of give up you know which like and I, I that's not what I do but I I've had the impulse it's like you know why should I learn French or yeah. Do the, do the dishes. I'll be dead in thirty or forty years. Let's depart. Sure. You know. Yeah. Let's wait it out. But but the the the, <laughs> but the main thing is it makes you focused on like what's important in your life. And my wife helped me with this because when we got married twenty two years ago, she found out that I had not thrown away a single shirt that I've ever owned in my life. There were like from, uh, from in high your school, life. From well, maybe maybe when I was a kid, but like I, I had shirts that I wore in high school, and she went through everything, and and she kept some of the high school. Sh- she wore some of my high school shirts, looked pretty hot, but uh, but she kind of went through all of my stuff and thinned it out, and um, I, I still don't know how people have, like live these minimal minimalist lifestyles where they have big houses with nothing in them. Like yeah. I still kind of don't get that because we always have piles somewhere. Uh, the, you, but it's tough. meaning we humans, or or you and your me, wife, my, me, my wife and I, yeah. Um, okay, and what do you? And so you think you're hoarding just as a nervous tick against mortality? Maybe I mean it, maybe a little the way I was raised because my parents grew up during the depression, and you know, sort of like you know, you don't want to throw away that moth-eaten sock; it could come in handy sometime. I know. My mom's still like my mom's saves every it's yeah and i get it like yeah. i get how they got that way but and, and when my parents passed you know we spent uh, my w- wife Suzanne and i spent weeks going through their house and garage cleaning it out i mean it was just did like, you find the money keep no. going no <laughs> you're like where's the money <laughs> no it was it was like a lot of stuff like literal literal garbage that, yeah that they would keep you know yeah and you were like, this is so stupid. It's unlike totally different than my garbage. My garbage is great. Well, here's here's there, there are several things. And I I've I've been working on myself, trying to like just keep what's important. Uh, but aside from the shirts and things like that, a tough thing for me to get rid of was fan mail. Because when I I, I up until the early up until the, the well, up until uh, about 20 years ago, I kept every single fan letter I'd ever received because I figured they're fan le- they're, they're love I get, letters. I get that. They're love letters. I understand letters. that because and- it feels disrespectful to be like, do you love me? Goodbye. <laughs> right. No, exactly that. And and I read them all. Uh, Did I save your life? Rip, rip, rip. Right. But my, my, my wife made the point that like, what are you going to be like 80 years old in the attic reading these letters over and over? Like somebody used to love me. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was a man named Michael Jackson and he, he had a song and then I had a, uh, it says here that if I'm ever in town, I can come over for a free meal. Okay. <laughs> here I come. You know? Yeah. And he said, you've got a family now. You, you have people that love you and you know, you can let go of that. So I, I had a storage facility with literally several dozen beacons, beacons boxes full of fan mail and got rid of it in one fell swoop. And it, it hurt because like I said, it's like, I, felt, but they said, Oh, they, those people still love you. They, right. You just don't have their junk. Imagine anymore. how hurt they are having yeah. heard this. Yeah. That so, it's so, all gone. So now I just, you know, I, I still read the fan mail and I keep maybe one or two. Per- I keep the ones that say your music stopped me from killing myself. Like, okay, I'll keep that one. No, I, I'm with you. Yeah. And Instagram messages and all that stuff. Like yeah. just the, the, that, that's, I, that's a horde that I understand because it does feel disrespectful to, yeah to like someone's actually like, it's a pain. It's it. They, you must have really touched them, especially male mm-hmm. Instagram messages and all that stuff. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah I, I assume most people that Instagram me are drunk. <laughs> or on drugs. And I think that's pretty pretty safe to say is true. Um, did you have to leave town? Someone once did a sweep of my house and I was out of town. And and Without uh, your permission? Yeah, no, she's like I'm she was like uh house sitting for me and she uh-huh. was like, I'm getting rid of your shit. And I was like, What are you talking about? And she's like, it, there's so much shit here that you do not need Literal and, feces? Say again. Literal feces in her Ah, uh, not after the sweep. Okay. Um, no, but she and and I had I. And she sent me a few photos. Like, do you need this? And I was like, no, you get rid of it. 
but I were you with her when she was doing it? Oh yeah. So you, I, you would, I, I would oversaw. you try to defend it and then be like, what am I? What's yeah, this? yeah. The the one thing uh, this the one thing I'm still blocking is uh, she was like, do you really need all your CDs? Like you've got you've got all the music on your computer, you can stream it. You like the and that's that's my one holdout. Like I, I need the jewel boxes. Like don't touch the CDs. Are you listening to them? No. <laughs> I know, I know what you I know, mean. I, know, I mean, again, I it's like bookshelves. I know. Why do we keep? I mean, bookshelves are more like trophy cases in a weird way. They're right. like intellectual. They're like, huh? yeah, uh-huh. 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 you see what I did? <laughs> um, whereas CDs is a bit like, I know. Where are they? Uh, in the CD closet. Okay, as long as they're, they're out, of, out of, they're out of sight. But you no, know, every you know, virtually everything that you keep, you don't need. No, really, no. And I'm slowly learning that, but it's taken a lifetime to kind of like understand. Yeah. And you're still planning on being buried with all of your things. Yeah. Like King Tut, dump all right? the CDs in the casket with yeah, me. Yeah, just fucking. Yeah. With a fucking. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Goodbye, Earth. <laughs> Hoarding. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hoarding. And that's not easy where you were living. Not a lot of room to hoard. I know. I know. Although high ceilings in that in that building, I remember. Oh, I mean, I have really high ceilings now, but I also, my problem is I, well, I mean, I you do, live in a hoarder's loft, they call it. It is lofty, but it's, it's, um, I just, I am not wired to be organized and I am a, I definitely have hoarder town. I'm not like, you know, like I need to save this pizza box forever. <laughs> like I'll, I'll throw the pizza box out. Sure. But, but you'll I'll, keep the, the wax paper. I'll keep then? the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a little crust. I'll keep that forever. Sure. But I mean, I, I'll find things that are just like, I'll be walking around my kitchen, I'll find like a business card someone gave me like 25 years ago. Like, how'd this end up next to my sink? <laughs> it just, and how did it, Todd? I probably put it there, but I... um. And do you I, then I do, not see it anymore? What do you mean? All right. The guy gives you a business card in 1998. Yeah. yeah. Do you, and then you put it in your pocket. That I might throw out. Okay. That I might throw out. I mean, I've gotten, but like I, when I moved, I moved a few months ago and I, it was a TV and I'm doing a sub lens or a TV and I actually threw out my slightly broken plasma TV and yeah. it's not easy to do, but I like, it is kind of broken. And then once you do it, it's not like I'm going, I miss my, yeah. <laughs> my TV. So Sarah, the aforementioned Sarah, I have this big CD rack that has like 800 CDs on it. And she came by to look at my new apartment. She's like, oh, you got to get rid of those CDs. Sarah Silverman? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she's right, but I can't do it. <laughs> CDs, a technology that you do not use. Yeah, yeah. No, you can, there's no, I'm going to lose the argument if we just do it that way. If we way. play this thing out, <laughs> we game this out. Yeah, yeah. And but, what, <laughs> well, tell me your, <laughs> what's your argument? I don't, I mean, it's, I don't know, because hoarding, I think, comes can it come from trauma? But I don't, I didn't have a particularly traumatic life. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's also something to be said for like, com- people just come out with pre existing. Yeah. Conditions. Yeah. That's true. It could be just an in. I mean, my mom had it a little bit. She was a bit that's of a always woman. a fairly good indicator. Yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, probably not as bad, but she saved stuff. And then my dad was, when she passed away, he just bulldozed through the foot. The- I had a, I have a, it's not a hoarding issue, but it is like, I don't know what to, I don't like just throwing it in a landfill. I feel like an asshole. Just be like, you take it, uh-huh. earth. Like, fucking here's my shit, enjoy it. And there's a decadence that I don't like about it that I will, if you want to argue that, I'll support you. Like, the, so you're just going to throw away a bunch of plastic and well, whatever I mean, the discs are made of? Was that, but there's also sometimes throwing away stuff that's like, you know, I don't end up with two dish racks. I don't need two dish racks. What do I just throw something that's a perfectly good dish rack? Right. But well, it's also like, what am I going to do? Like bring it to the Salvation Army? And Yeah. I guess I could. Yeah. I'd be, feel a little weird just walking. Got a dish rack for you guys. Where's your dish rack section? Uh, I'm going to say 75 cents on this. <laughs> Fairly clean. But yeah, I mean, I have storage units and here we go yeah there yeah storage units of stuff that you can't throw away i know like i was thinking there's some of this stuff a lot of this stuff i'm never gonna see for the rest of my life Uh uh-huh but i'm saving it 
I think I have this mythic day that I'm going to sit down with. I mean, I've hired home organizers many times. I should say that. I had a female friend just at my own place go like, I'm. Fr she was staying there for a week. And she's like, I'm hiring an organizer. I'm getting rid of half the shit. And I was like, all right. And I don't even know what she got rid of. And I don't miss any of it. And I don't Yeah, care. I mean, yeah, the home organizer has been very helpful. But I still... I have too much stuff, man. A dish, you have a bunch of dish racks in a store. I unit. actually did. I think I, I think sometimes I just was like, fuck, I am going to throw away a dish rack. It's perfectly <laughs> good. I don't know what else to do with it. I'm throwing yeah. it away. And then you feel like, all right, I fucking did something. Does that feel like, I'm a fucking healthy person. Yeah, did, that does feel good. And uh, yeah, I mean, often I get sentimental about things and then I give them up and I don't really, you know, even like that apartment I lived in with Sarah, I lived, this is kind of a shithole mice and everything mm -hmm. and i lived there a long time like over like 18 19 years yeah and i was like i'd be like i'm gonna stay there's my you know the first of all it's easy to just sign a lease and renew yeah. rather yeah. than move yes so there's Moving that i will give myself that credit time. but i remember thinking oh man i like my little apartment and it's like it's got mice <laughs> bro so and then i've moved out and i left and i just like took a few pictures of the place yeah which i don't even know where they are and probably in the storage I'm unit. I'm fine, you know. I like, also, I, what? How much are you paying for the storage units? Which, which of the four storage units? Fuck are, Christ! But <laughs> right there, this is dude. Juicy stuff for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> These are juicy blocks. Uh, do what? It's got to be several hundred dollars a month. Yeah, it is. It's um, it is. And you're just willing to eat it. I Even mean, not knowing what's in it. You know what the problem is? Because I think I'm ADHD, which I put on my list. Right. I don't eat. Sometimes it's just, I don't know where to begin. Yeah. I mean, I know there's that thing. Where do I start? Start somewhere with like writing or something. Yeah. But I mean, I try. And I, I think there is just a thing, an ADHD thing where you just like, I'll look at my, I remember lit, when I lived in on the Lower East Side, I want, so I, I got to clean my table, my desk here. <laughs> I got to do that. And like there was a building being built like, and I watched like 15 stories of this building <laughs> be built before I cleaned my table. I was like, oh, well, they're building it's like whole, a perfect passage. They're building a 600 room hotel here, oh, <laughs> and hilarious. I can't just straighten out my desk. Yeah. But I think, it, I mean, it's wiring. It's, um, it's wiring. Yeah, it's Is your it, wiring. Do you think it's wiring? Uh, yeah. I, I, it seems like if it's it just seems like aren't you cheap also me yeah no nah. oh okay i just i just assume <laughs> meaning like well you mentioned spending 25 dollars for 20 or 20 dollars <laughs> for 25 dollars that like i assume you're like want to hold on to your money oh i mean i certainly i'm careful sometimes but then i'll Start spend a ridiculous amount on lunch and blow like, it out you know like why don't i just spend fucking 30 dollars for a chicken Caesar salad, you know? Yeah, because you're in LA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I want someone to close down your storage units. I mean, I need, I the, like, I want them to do like a Hoarders episode. Uh, I'm having said that I've only watched like promos for Hoarders and it makes me, yeah, I mean, it's, it it's me really, nervous. it's sad. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that level where, yeah, you, like Hoarders, if they were scouting, it would be like, yeah, not. Does anyone close, ever no say cigar. I'm pretty bad? It, I feel like everyone goes, I'm not, I'm not like fucking. That one lady. They, uh, I used to do a great bit about home organizer. I forgot it though. But anyway, just as long as I let you, you know, it's he's great. He's forgotten more good bits than you're <laughs> ever going to write. Um, what was your question? Then? My question is, what are we going to do about your storage units? I guess, I mean, I feel like I have this vision of like, like I have a storage unit in Florida also. <laughs> is that fifth? Is that a fifth one? Would that no, be a like fifth a, or that's, that's a, uh, the fourth? Well, I mean, I have storage in my building. I have this other storage that's like they came and picked some stuff up. I have another storage unit, so three or four maybe. Unbelievable. I, can't, I know it is. It's kind of crazy. Multiple states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this vision of like uh, just going into a football field and dumping all my storage unit stuff, just going through it. <laughs> I don't know if I, anyone can arrange that, but uh, does anyone own a football field and a really big blanket? Yeah. But, I mean, no, you're right. And the money is just kind of... just. It just hemorrhaging. Yeah, it is hemorrhaging, yeah. And why, you know what I mean? Spending on something but else. But then there's part of me that, because the, the thing is like with organized, with um messy people, some messy people are actually more organized. I get that. Well, you know, like 
The guy yeah. who's like, hey, you moved my salt shaker three inches to the left. Yeah. Might not be as organized. The guy with the messy desk is yeah. like, I know where my wallet is. It's under this, yeah. this magazine here. Yeah. It's under the business card from It's under the business card from the, <laughs> from a half a bottle of uh, hotel shampoo. From, <laughs> from a, from from a, a embassy in. suites that no longer exist. <laughs> My, my new obsession is uh, I'm uh, having a midlife crisis where I said, I want to get the, the, the Kiss did this. Uh, I was a Kiss fan the, my whole life. I said, I wanted to get the Chopper poster. They did four motorcycle posters that I loved when I was a kid. I said, I want to get them in mint condition. And it sent me on a fucking road. Now I'm just, I've been obsessively buying old Kiss posters, the Japanese versions, uh, mint condition, factory sealed. It's fucking, my wife hates it. Uh, she hates Kiss. She hates seeing it in the house. But it has become, it's all, it's, it's Do you like, hang them? Uh, I frame them in museum glass. Like I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'll find like a Japanese rice poster, uh, rice paper poster, and I have it framed in museum glass. I mean, it's become an obsession and the compulsion is I just can't stop. It's hoarding. It's, 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 it's controlled and respectable hoarding because it's not dirty and it's not. Yes, okay, so would it be safe to say that your experience as a human being has felt wild and that you didn't know what was happening from moment to moment and now you do things like this to like slow it down and collect and obsess and narrow your focus. Is a wide focus too big? It's, you know, it's one of those things where I, I've always fixated on little things. Um, you know, now it's this. At one point it would have been Ozzy or Sabbath or, or mm -hmm. pictures with people or this is the thing I've fixated on. And I keep breaking out of it, like temporarily going away from it. So I had to buy giant portfolios to put these things in. We're buying you used to take pictures with celebrities? Is that with, um, some, for years, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I actually, after a while, I started getting jokes out of it and I'm like, I'll do it and whatever happens, happens. And I got like a lot of actually really good bits out of it. Yeah. So I was like, there was always something to it. But now if I interview somebody, I will, but I don't really give a yeah. fuck anymore. It just became a thing, like a collectible thing that I was doing. But yeah, the Kiss poster obsession is my newest fixation. But the compulsion, I can't stop once I start something. And that goes into any type of addiction. It's just, you know, you, you just, it's greed. It's fucking greedy. It's gluttony. It's like all the. It's so you think it's greed. Big you, part that, of it. That's underneath it. You think that's what it is? Yeah, gluttony, greed. I mean, it, it, it's grabbing. I heard a guy in a meeting describe it for us grabbing for more than my share of everything. Um, he was, it was a 12 step meeting for alcohol, and he was talking about. I my I grabbed for more than my share always my share of pleasure my share of uh, alcohol my share of sex I'm always grabbing for more. That's than interesting because that feels obviously alcoholics have a reputation for being selfish. Sure, which legitimately, but I almost feel like it's it's I would think they're selfish because they're robbing everyone else of a of a good relationship. Sure, or a good connection, but the selfish part is. Interesting. I'll add it to my arsenal of things I don't like about alcoholics. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. No, but, but very like, fr I, we're, we're frustrating people. Obviously, it's it's uh, because again, there's unpredictability, uh, which no one likes. Well, the, but it's but it's the, but that's the part is that the thing that makes me sympathetic to alcoholics is like they have a feeling they're trying to get rid of, and so they're dulling it, right? Yeah. But if the feeling, but this almost feels like uh ne like very aggressively hostile like i want everything i don't want you to have anything yeah or it's just that the bottom line is the hole you're trying to fill you don't realize has a hole in the like the the cup you're trying to fill has a hole in the bottom so you're always throwing stuff into it and the worst the worst crime of it is not that there's a hole in the bottom which makes it unfillable. It's the fact that the hole is small, so you you think you're going to fill it. Like, it's just, you don't ever look at it and go, I'm empty and it's, I need to do 10,000 things. It's always like the one more, the fucking one more, that one more high, that one more fucking jerk. Like the one more, if she sits on my face and I smell her ass and it's this, then I'm done. You keep looking at like the rim of the cup as if it's almost full, but then it goes down a little and then you have to keep going and then it goes down. And so, you can't accept that it's not, you can't accept a three quarter full. No, it's, that's what, that's where that greed comes from too. But that's the part, they always talk about like the, the hole that you're trying to fill. But I realized that the hole, it, it gives you the illusion that you can fill it by, by always right. hovering below the surface. And that's what drives you crazy. Cause it's like a lot of times it's that one poster. I just got to get one. There's a Japanese poster by a company. Yep, called, and Victor. then that's, we'll shut it down. I'll have it.
But I've gone through that already with another poster and I got it. And then all of a sudden the obsession started again. Just this one. Like I don't look at 500 posters. I gotta get 500 posters. It's fucking fascinating because I've never heard anyone describe it like that. Yeah, but that's to me was the, that to me is the curse of it is, is the, because uh, long, long ago, you learn that early in recovery is that I, this, they call it a God hole. You can call it whatever you want to call it. We're filling it, filling it. And there's a hole in the bottom so you can never fill it. But it's, the, the, it's that itch of it always being close to being there. And then, whew, like, you're looking for that moment, like, I'm done. I'm done. I've done it. I can put it on the shelf, and it's a completed work. So did, is part of it just accepting that it's unfillable and that's a futile, any effort to fill it is futile, don't start. I guess so, but it's easier said than done because like, I know it. And again, I heard a speaker say one time, knowledge is no defense against the first drink. And I always remember, that was 1989 he said that, this guy Ted in a fucking convention in New Jersey. Knowledge is no defense. Like, knowing it helps you not do it, but I have to... I have to not do it. Like just knowing that I'm compulsive isn't enough. I have to stop Well, there's stop so doing many things it. that are like that, which yeah. is, I was just in Vegas and it's like, people can't resist it. Mm -hmm. They know that this whole place is built on people thinking they could win and losing. Yep. And they cannot resist it. And to even open it up, like I won't do gambling ads on here. Cause it's like, this is not good. Yeah. It's not, people can't resist it. And then people go, well, and they're drink responsibly or, and some people can, but a lot of people can't. Yeah. Do we need to build the world for the people that can't? I don't know, but I think some things are so insidious that you kind of have to uh, make allowances for those people. You do. It's kind of cruel not to. And I don't know. I'm of two minds. Like it's cruel or, you know, it's life's cruel. Adults have to make adult choices. Like, uh, and again, I'm a person who makes a lot of poor choices. I have historically, but it's always been on me. Always. I mean, um, I understand cigarette ads targeting kids is one thing, but I don't gamble because I, I went to Vegas one time and I put a dollar on like one of those stupid wheels, like duck, 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 yep. duck, duck, and it landed on a dollar. So I want, and the, or no, it landed on 20 and I won 20 bucks. And my first thought was I should have fucking put down 20. I would have won 400. The first thing I thought, and I yeah. realized that's what this is. Yeah. That's how it happens. It's never enough. And uh, when you lose, you just keep, you have to get even. The cup is almost full. Let me just get this money back and I'll be done. It's a completed What's work. What's the saying? One's too many and two's not, not enough. enough. Yeah, yeah. Only the different number. Yeah. The one I heard was uh, this guy, Wayne, who my sponsor used to <laughs> like pick me. I like how you remember everyone's name. I remember weird things. Um, but this guy, Wayne, uh, he was a weird guy with smoke. He was very mentally ill. I didn't know it at the time. I was 18. But uh, he would always, he's the first guy I heard say that. He goes, one's too many and a thousand's not enough. And I'm like, yep. That makes yeah. perfect sense. And that's the cup thing, right? Yeah. Basically, like... Avoid the first and, one. And so you know that you cannot fill up the... And it's, it's just an unease. You're trying to get, like, this fucking poster, this is going to solve it. The way that it gets filled up, or it actually does work, is like if you're... if you're Whatever your version of sober is for a person. If it's gambling, if it's sex, if it's drugs, whatever it is. If you're doing something and trying to live a more spiritual life, and by spiritual, again, just being good to other people, mm -hmm. being faithful to your wife, being helpful, like it really does take that buzz away. Like, you know, I don't have the mania of, of, of addictive thinking when I'm having a good time with my wife um, and we're having sex. I'm not always thinking like, I gotta do this. But when I start feeding into that, like when it, that's when I'm in, I'm in trouble. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.